Um, hi, how's it in the name of Christ? How are you doing? It's your girl, Cran K. Gigarable. I hope you're good. I hope you're peachy. I hope you're Stella. And I hope you're in a neat little bunch. If you're not, welcome to the party. Is that just not the story of our lives? Uh, kindly gauge these caveats. Uh, look out for my captions. Kindly look out for my captions. They're not always accurate. They sometimes use a small g for God. They're sometimes irreverent. For as a result, misspelled, wrong word altogether. It's not me. Uh, if it was up to me, I would have it be different altogether. But I guess it's not up to me now, is it? It's up to the fact that ain't nobody looking at my long form content, and that is a travesty. But it doesn't matter. Bottom line is, if I had an incentive to edit my long form content, uh, not long form con not edit, sorry, but like my my captions, I would. But I presently don't. One day in the future, God willing, I will edit them. But I don't think there's a future. And then next thing, next part is um, what do you call this? The next component is my face. I'm very potentially wearing application makeup. If I am, you'll know. If I'm not, you'll also know. It tends to bounce off and on my face. That's not me. It's an application. And then thirdly, I have a segment. I'm only human after all. I'm only human after all. I'm only human after all. Don't take a jab at me. Do a different thing if you don't want to. It's all good in the hood. Uh, I don't know. There's like God to face in the end. Anyway, whatever. Look, uh, it's, a, it's an empathy segment. I'm trying to blush my cheeks to bring forth. Indeed, just that. A blush. Hoping. That perhaps it might inspire empathy in people. It doesn't really work, but it's my segment and I like it. I keep it. Um, I don't know. Did it work? If it didn't, tomorrow's another day. I wanted you to see that there's blood in my body. Anyway, whatever. Moving on right ahead. Let's just get straight into it. Today is the 22nd of June 2024, but it's actually the 21st because I've hopped over into the next day. Things are serious. Things are diabolical and things are dire. So uh, yesterday, the video that I did... I let you guys know that I was under a severity of attack and I was actually physically sick. Um, I had to take two grand parts this morning. They worked and I haven't had a headache ever since, so I've recovered. However, the physical affliction of my body is still there largely, but it dissipated quite a lot during exercise because that's how I conquer. I have a routine, I have a schedule and it works swimmingly like clockwork. But what is imperative to understand, guys, is that this year is not a going concern. Understand, it can't be. It literally just very, it, it just can't be, okay? It just, it can not be. South Africa is diabolical, but you know what? The world at large is, quite frankly, at this point, diabolical. I am exhausted, weary of speaking about the same things time and time again. Where do I put my hands? I'm tired of speaking about the same stuff over and over again, but I have to just keep on raising it. You know when people have got hope? where you're concerned only because your situation is a particular way. It's all very disturbing to look at that, right? Yeah, I might appear abandoned, I might appear forsaken, but y'all need to understand that the life that I am living right now, and I have said this on numerous occasions, is but a pin drop in the vast ocean. Do you understand? In comparison to what your lives are going to be like in the tribulation. So let me just put this out there. This evening when i was in the kishion doing whatever people do in the kishion i heard the lord say now i have basically it was like me overhearing somebody's thoughts in the mode of what i would understand to be the tribulation okay and well it was not yet tribulation mode it was post rapture pre-tribulation where it is that things have yet to get so bad for christians that they don't know whether they're coming or going so it was essentially somebody still relatively healthy and okay in body but they knew what was coming and these this person these people this person was one person in particular was a woman she was privy to my ministry she was privy to me Garabo, in particular and she was saying to herself now i have got to um create captions interpreting her zwana and her zulu so as to help people understand what she's saying essentially this woman was in tribulation mode right no not tribulation it was like the rapture had just happened but things were yet to get out of hand but people who were sober understood what just happened but they were left behind and this person was privy to my ministry in the run-up to acted a fool passed me shade essentially withheld support a woman do you understand what i'm saying but in this mode she had humbled herself she had recognized what happened what I had spoken had come to pass and she had now put herself or designated herself in a position to create captions or inter like a, what do you call this thing? Translations. Yeah, captions translating the videos where I speak in my language, the videos where I, 
yeah, there are videos where I have just wrapped on in Zwana. Shorts where I've just wrapped on in Zulu. Um, and, and not added captions because it was just too taxing, too onerous for me to do. And this woman had pretty much that for a job. It's like it was, she was among the designated interpreters. She was among the people who volunteered to interpret what I said in a video. And she had to then, um, I guess, recaption all of those videos. And yeah, like I said, she was coming from a vantage point where she was initially arrogant, pompous, comprehensively disregarding of my cause. And then later on, because the rapture happened and they got left behind, they got these people left got, got left behind, they repent, realize how what, what fools they were. And now they're out here captioning my videos in portions where it is that I'm not speaking English. Um uh, what, 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 ging, 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 yeah. what I'm trying to explain to you guys now is that we are going home and I've been saying this for a minute. And there are people who are actively outside of my ministry right now who call themselves Christians that are going to get left behind. Not because of me, but because of a behavior or activity that they are engaged in presently against me. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, not because of me, but because of the behavior they're engaged in against people like me. You're insincere, you're unsupportive, and you are holding some pretty hard knock, hard, like incendiary attitudes against true Christians. But you love to sit among us. You are tears among wheat. You are not truly born again. You're not really regenerated. And you hold exquisite hostilities against true Christians. You are always making excuses and you are blame thirsty against the body of Christ. True. And that attitude, God Almighty, cannot be mocked. The Lord tests the heart. You can deceive many on the left and on the right of you about your true salvation or your lack thereof, whatever. But God is not mocked. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, so too shall he reap. There are going to be people literally sitting, waiting with bated breath for the rapture that are going to be left behind. They will have been watching for the rapture and yet get left behind. Uh, indeed, it is written in God's word with the parable of the uh, ten virgins. Five were wise and five were unwise. All virgins were doing what? Waiting for the groom. They were all waiting for the groom. But some of them were wise and others weren't. The oil in the lamp is the tantamount of the equivalent of your true consecration to Jesus Christ. It is the Holy Spirit. It is actually being truly born again. The Holy Spirit enables one to bear fruit. When you are not bearing fruit, God cannot be mocked, even though you appear to be a Christian in the midst of other people out here calling themselves Christians, you're always walking around the body of Christ. Essentially, you speak a lot of Christianese and you have um, a couple of footsteps that are Christian, but you are not really saved. You are insincere and hence the hostility in your heart against a true Christian. Hence the hard knock bad heart against a true disciple. Now, let me just get um, into, let me just explain to you what, what <laughs> I'm under a lot of attack, okay, a barrage, like just an allotment of a severity of abuse of my person. And if at all this were to linger any longer, I frankly would not make it. I wouldn't survive it because I am literally being targeted for death. But what also needs to be comprehended is that if the rapture was not happening very soon, it is very likely, if not factually, the reality that I would not be in this situation. My, my... <laughs> My situation is the situation that it is precisely because the Lord allowed it to give you some kind of a living epistle prototype of what life as a saint in the tribulation is going to be like. I have been set apart for that job. That's what I'm, I'm doing. That's why I'm living such a hard knock life. But if we still had another 50 years to go, for instance, on the earth, another hundred, the Lord would have given me everything I asked for in prayer. He would have given me a husband. He would have given me uh, children and the, essentially all of your insanity would not have worked. Your insanity of sorcery against me would not have worked. It would have hit brick walls just as it tends to hit brick walls with Christians. We are titanium, bulletproof, nothing to lose, fire away, fire away. We're impregnable fortresses. So if a Christian is appearing to be mown to the ground, yo, that is a strong delusion. It's an optical illusion. And those who receive it as fact are put in the pathway of that deception that they might be utterly comprehensive, comprehensively finished off. Do you understand what I'm saying? So... Before I get even into the description or the explanation of my life emulating that of tribulation saints, and frankly, I've done videos like this before, but you know, I keep repeating myself. I'm all, I'm on that reiterative tip. I guess it is imperative to reiterate stuff that people it might just be hammered down um, sufficiently in the lives of people who could, as a result of hearing it literally for the fourth or the fifth time, 
maybe actually make the rapture like as in repent like get over the lackluster flaccid fluffy wannabe christianity that you are walking in and actually abandon all that carnality at the door that you might actually truly get redeemed so you can basically escape the things which are coming on the earth as it is written in luke 21 always pray that you might be counted worthy to escape the things which are coming on the earth very well so perhaps the reiterative general disposition that i'm walking in is for the sake of those that god will bring into his chambers to to pass his indignation um the, the few remnant of them that'll get raptured the few remnant of them that will heed prior to the rapture maybe that's why i keep repeating myself it's for the sake of those guys because frankly the repetition that i am walking in right now is going to be um redundant once the rapture has happened because one of my videos is going to be so impactful and so reaching and so heated and so convicting and so run with that people are not going to walk in the luxury that they presently have right now to second guess me doubt me ignore what was spoken therein why because i will have been a raptured saint i will have been taken so people are not going to be insincere with receiving my message then so one video will literally cut it it'll be enough it'll be enough half an hour of a two hour video will be enough people will just run with every word i say they will hang on to it they will re-listen <laughs> that's also something that god keeps on telling me that people are going to re-listen to my videos right now you, they listen and they just kind of like on something mm, next mm, next because they think that ariana grande thank you next mm, that's what's good but once the rapture has happened given the the, 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 the vindication of my person by the rapture the seriousness of the situation the recognition of one's hell-bound state given that you are not raptured so therefore you must ask at that moment of the rapture if you had passed away probably you would have gone to hell mm. granted the confirmation of such details as those the trepidation the fear that you're gonna have just coursing through your blood yeah that's what's good coursing through your veins is going to make it such that you will no longer be that insincere anymore so all the constant repetitions of what i'm doing right now are frankly for the luxury or for the benefit of those who will actually make the rapture everybody else the redundancy of my repeated messages it's not gonna it's not gonna matter anymore it won't you will listen to just one video with a particular topic um and run with it right now it's like i'm spoon feeding do you understand what i'm saying i keep on repeating like a teacher at revision in school keep on coming back to hear the same stuff over and over again until finally it clicks it clicks it clicks so i guess i'm speaking right now to those in whose hearts this will finally click and so we will all go in the rapture together snatch some even from the flames of hell like those that will escape the indignation of the lord on the earth congratulations hallelujah heaven rejoices when one sinner repents yeah so i guess that's who i'm working for right now and never mind am i working for those that will finally click at revision i'm after school i am also doing this for myself because this is a form of self-therapy i have got to keep on reminding myself of why my life is like this because if i don't if i don't come here and self-counsel essentially i am done for and that is not about to be a thing like not any minute now okay right so i am presently bombarded that's what you must comprehend like all these attacks that keep on being slapped in my general like backyard repetitively by licentious buffoons I'm weary, I'm exhausted. Before I came here, I actually sought the Lord's face to help me communicate a message that is not going to focus on just one mere random, absolute nuisancical and therefore utterly irrelevant menace. I am exhausted of speaking about filthy men. Do you understand what I'm saying? That keep on going back to the drawing board where I am concerned. I, frankly, I don't want to have to award them a pedestal or some kind of a stage for them to hang ten and you know swing around in my proverbial uh merry-go-round and just keep on getting a mention like no you're not that important you are frankly irrelevant is that basic um but you know i, I saw the lord's face to help me speak a message that is addressing the insanity of that re of those repeat offenses but without giving anybody a pedestal without giving anybody repeat mentions and so therefore making them appear somewhat grandiose important like a figure of mention like for what in my ministry and that's exactly what it is that the lord is awarding me an opportunity to do right now avoid getting into granular details about the menacing pursuits of dangerous men uh but rather just talk about the ubiquitous problem of sin that is going to be perpetually done by a rebellious generation of obstinate people in the last days until finally god is like no we're not doing this no we're not doing this actually right now even as i speak to you because the holy spirit leads me hallelujah i got a vision of uh the men of sodom 
the men of Sodom and also the men of the Benjamin tribe in that heinous story of excruciating rape of that woman whose body was cut into 12 pieces and sent to all the various tribes of Israel. Yeah, I just got a vision of those men. What are those men? Let's just get into brief description of them. The men of Sodom and the men of the Benjamite tribe. Yeah, they out here wanted to have unhealthy and licentious relations with guests visiting their town and insisted that they be brought out that they might be had sex with all night long. In the case of Sodom, none such activity ha happened, right? From what I, I, uh, I understand. But in the case of the Benjamite tribe, uh, they, they actually raped a woman all night until she died. And then her body was cut into 12 pieces and sent all throughout the, 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 the 12 tribes of Israel as a message of, of wickedness, right? Yeah, that's what's good. As a message to basically speak of their wickedness. These men are like that. These men are exactly like that. These men are insisting, bring her out to us that we might lay with her. Bring her out that we might have sex with her. And yo understand okay like comprehend this it is written in god's word about the last days that they will be like the days of noah and they will also be like the days of sodom and gomorrah before the lord rained his indignation on both ecosystems sodom was bring out men to us that we might lay with them all night and here it is that i'm chilling here on some i am untouchable and men are like bring her out that we might lay with her I am sought for the stand for the status quo or the ultimate eventuality of Amnon and Tamar. Do you understand what I'm saying? Where it is that a man will like basically is like burp once they have my body because they will have wanted me so desperately. It is fetishistic, this thing. And I'm being shielded from ending up like Tamar, ending up like the woman whose body gets cut up into 12 pieces and sent all throughout the tribes of Israel as a message of all of their wickedness. But the fact that that is even a desire against my person evidences that we are right where it is that the bible said we would be before the coming of the son of man in sodom total sodom bring her out that we might have her just a like a forcefulness a coerciveness bring her out that we might have her i've also had a whole bunch of lesbian curses but i told you guys that i don't even humor those spells i don't even talk about them even when i dream about them because it's that futile to me it's that new nonsensical that it might even be suggested that i would ever go out like that but that that's like some females are just being on some bring her out that i might have her ew like you have exchanged natural relations for to though for those that are unnatural with with women of the, of the people of the same sex and so God hands you over to that incredible debased mind that you might continue to do such licentious activity as that. We are living in those days. That's what I'm getting at. We are living in those very days. When I was working, when I was working out, I um today this evening, I I was made to. That's why I was laughing. Okay, so like if you were to watch my Friday workout, the last workout, like day 44. Okay, yeah. Uh, 54 uh, I was, yeah 54 i don't know whatever like yeah the the the, the exercise uh, session where i was wearing a tie-dye uh top and some black pants and a green a polo neck underneath yeah that day there are portions where i was actually giggling i was laughing sometimes i don't laugh i i, I feel emotional and i actually want to cry because i feel offended by the uh, attrition but i guess i was just so pumped up by endorphins from exercise that it made me laugh rather right uh that you know like uh, the way that i react to stimuli coming in from the spirit realm varies on frankly how i'm feeling for the day sometimes i laugh so other times i i freak out i panic and i'm like but how long is this going to carry on happening for but today i laughed because it is laughable at least seasonally tomorrow it might make me cry yeah so uh i was made to recall the story of a woman that i listened to the testimony of where where was this um who who told the story i don't know if it was somebody narrating the story or if it was the woman herself telling the story but it certainly was one of these story times that i i, I sometimes every so often tune into on youtube okay let me tell you the story of this woman i i had a okay i will tell you the vision before let me tell you the story and then the vision that i had uh this this lady that was being uh, that, that uh, i guess the leading lady in this particular story met a man okay she met a man that she fell helplessly and hopelessly in love with the two of them appeared to have a, a swimming romance they were cool and content to be with one another they spent every waking moment with each other it appeared this here was the love of this man's life it appeared yeah and then the woman one day like out of the blue catches 
wind as she gets a phone call from, I believe, a friend of hers telling her that the man that she is head over heels besotted with that she spent the past couple of months with almost every single day, almost every single day. And like there was nothing in this man that was suspicious, nothing in this man that was giving any double life at all. He, he spent so much time with her that it appeared that she was the only person never mind woman in his life at all that's how much time that this guy spent just copious amounts of time with this woman and then this lady gets a phone call from her friend telling her that girl you're gonna have to sit down wherever you're at right now i have something to tell you and she's like okay hit me and indeed the friend hits her because it was like a whammy bah in the face yeah she's like today let's say his name was jonathan she's like jonathan is getting married today Jonathan is getting married today. Yeah. Whoa. Oh. I, I can't even imagine. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. The man that you have spent the past couple of months to a year with almost every single day, you hear in the grapevine that he's getting married to someone else. You spoke to him yesterday. He's your boyfriend. You were on, like, you speak every day on the phone. He is your man now. Yet, that very yesterday that you spoke to him, it just did not, you know, pass him by in his mind at all to make it evident that mm, I have something to tell you. She spoke with him yesterday, likely even that morning. Hey, baby, how are you? Text messages, pretty much the whole thing that you go through in the mill as you are dating. Mm, yeah. And then she gets a call from one of her girls letting her know that Jonathan is getting married. The man that is your boyfriend that we all met, that met even your mom parents were involved and everything the man who met your mother and what have you mm. that's what's good yeah no he's getting married he's getting married like proper like it's a venue wedding like he's yeah apparently this woman had a nervous breakdown and essentially lost her mind to a point of being checked into a psychiatric hospital for a couple of months she was rendered somewhat catatonic for months because of that it would take quite a severity of recovery for her to eventually be restored to work life as normal she was that thrown aback that level of double mindedness and that level of duplicity and that level of in um of selfishness and and and, and carelessness for the heart of another person it turns out that this man was having a double life and it is speculated by her friends that what was going on there is that the woman that he married he was in a relationship with her that was long distance and that's how he was able to spend literally all of his time with this other woman that's how he was able to elude her because you can't be at two places at the same time so it was speculated that he likely was in a long distance relationship and now that he was getting married i guess she she and him were in the same town for the like wedding maybe for her to then be restored back to where she was etc this woman was rendered catatonic anyway so you have heard that story it's all very disturbing isn't it very well i when i was working out today had a flash vision from the lord showing me me ending up like that woman me being that woman the woman who is in love with the man that she is calling hers and then next thing she finds out somehow that he's just gotten married or he is getting married or he is married to another woman and that the whole time this was just a dilly-dallying joke i laughed at the suggestion of that because what in the world under heaven would ever put me in a relationship with a man for months on end do you understand what i'm saying uh where it is that i don't know that he is with somebody that he's actually rather getting married to what, what would put me in an environment of that nature where i am engaging in dating recreational activity that is the, that's similar to what it is that i used to be in when i was in the world essentially the groping and the touching and the kissing and the making out of my person my body like listen up okay that this would not be a man that's trying to come into the space of a christian woman and honor her, her chastity honor the fact that she's waiting on god for a husband this is a man that is going to vehemently experiment with seeing if he can't bed me without me being married however first but however not first without promising me the absolute world because apparently i can naively be harassed like that all of my pain all of my sorrow all of the red flags that likely would be flailing i would ignore them coupled with the fact that i i come pa packaged with loads of experience of such dastardly men as these but i'm gonna all of a sudden be super naive because somehow witchcraft is an operation somehow sorcery is an operation 
listen up, okay? That whole vision that I had, the Lord was showing me that the only reason why any man at all would even want to come into my space and continue to marry some other woman anyway is because of the fact that I am so lowly. I am going through so much. My life is just so broken. I am so devastated. I've got so nothing, if you know what I'm saying, that these shallow random buffoons in these streets that want to have their bread buttered on both sides, have their cake and eat it too, want to enjoy the glory of a consecrated woman to Jesus, the crush that they have, the, the fascination with me that they have, the charm that they imagine I, 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 I exude, all that, run with it, essentially just get to enjoy the vivacity of a God-fearing woman or Kazang, but without having to tank your statistics in terms of clout, without having to tank your clout stats in the sense that, but like, who is she? She ain't nobody. She doesn't have proper family. Her life literally sucks, okay? And everything she tries falls apart. She's super cursed. I'm not about to go and suture myself in marriage to a woman like that. A whole bunch of shallow, fair-weather men, the fair-weather status of which, however, is not um, uh, divorced from their ability to have feelings for women they have no regard for the clout of. And so for those reasons, they're happy to hit that and then quit that. They're happy to humor it. They're happy to make them lifetime mistresses. They're happy to make them side pieces. But I'm not about to go and walk a woman like that down the aisle for crying out loud. Like, what is she going to add to my particular book? I already spoke about these cloud chasing men in one of my other videos. I keep mentioned, I keep reiterating myself. That's what I'm getting at. Yeah. But like, it appears that the pursuit of my person by them, despite me putting it out there time and time again, that no, we're not going out like that. Is irrelevant. It doesn't matter how strongly I feel about a situation. What's rather important to them is that I still have nothing. And for as long as I'm still in this compromised position and also granted my gargantuan year, uh, age of, of, of 40, yeah, at some point, I'm just going to capitulate. They just want to fetishistically consume, drink, juice, eat up, whole, just chow. Do you understand? That which they fancy, it's a greed, it's a rapacity. Do you understand? They want to mess with it. They want to experiment with it because they fancy it. They like it. It it titivates them. There is something about me that they like. But like I said, I hold no statistics, no credentials that would make for, you know, something that they can proudly take home to mother. And so for those reasons, they would linger me along carry me around long enough for me to feel like I am in a loving relationship with a, an honest, sincere man, only for me to hear in the grapevine, like, Papa, it's hilarious, it's laughable, right, isn't it, mm. uh, that, that he's getting married to somebody else, yeah, that has clout, Papa, like, Garabo, one day just thoroughly, just literally ending up a lifetime mistress, a man that's unprepared to let go of the side piece, because he likes her a really lot, however, she's, like I said, a cloutless, she has no oomph, no weight, you know, to her that is going to make me look really good in front of my boys. Plus, like, I'm scared of the fact that this woman is so super cursed. She is, like, crazy cursed. Obviously, I look cursed, right? Mm. I am afraid of the fact that this woman is cursed. And so, if at all she's so cursed, she will never come up out of this. She will never be okay. She is always going to be the struggling rando that I decided to marry. She's going to tank my statistics. Oh, you shallow buffoon. That's what's good. Yeah. And that's why God keeps on comparing me to Tamar with Amnon, men that are prepared to trick a woman into ending up in the same room with them that they might have a field day with her and then hate her more than he loved her at first. Hate her more than he loved her at first. If you've read the story of Amnon and Tamar in the Bible, you will know that's like a whole thing. You will know that there are men that exist that will thoroughly trick a woman to sleep with her and then afterwards treat her like she is a harlot. Treat her like she is a prostitute even though she was a virgin at the time of him desecrating her body. That's what's good. Mm. So, I mean, when I saw that vision while I was working out of that woman, that story, I, I laughed because I was like, the fact that a man thinks that he can somehow dupe a woman with so a poignant spiritual gifting into being all devastated upon finding out that he's getting married to another woman. The fact that he, any man can think that they can do that to me is laughable one because i'm a child of the living god i'm consecrated god is the one that protects me and secondly i've got this like spiritual gift like i dream i keep saying it over and over again whenever dastardly no new sensical menaces it pierce into my ecosystem my ex-boyfriend for instance did a death curse some weeks ago where it is that he cloaked himself in some kind of a blanket do you understand what i'm saying that i might not see that it's him behind it <laughs> and somebody in my dream 
rocked up it was like a, a, a man a person that i did not recognize but this person came through in my dream and a person that i was in the same working environment with it's almost like another christian rocked up and just removed this like invisibility blanket that was on my ex and he just got exposed i saw him like i was just walking around and somebody came and ripped the blanket off his body and i saw that he was in that ecosystem planning this death curse so even when you do cloaking spells where it is that you try to hide that it's you that, that that you know like proper like slipping into a woman's life that you know has got a spiritual gifting and then hiding the corovela with a cloaking spell i see stuff like that there's like some menace gen z that did that uh, uh, like maybe a month or two ago and i i, I like I, I, I frankly just stopped re replying to his uh, emails that did that he afflicted me with a gorbella spell love spell right knowing like he's a he he is a twasified sangoma he claims to have been repentant from that craft right and i was humoring him because i thought that he was a man redeemed out of the kingdom of darkness for crying out loud but i was not even humoring him on a romantic note he was too young for me i was just speaking to him because he wrote me on on facebook uh, ultimately we got to the direct to, to, to the email space where i was still humoring him thinking that he's a brother with whom i'm communicating and this dude turns out he had a crush and an ulterior motive and uh despite his like he was so young anyway whatever this rando knowing not only did he watch a whole chunk of my ministry right uh, uh to a point of ultimately ending up writing me but he we constantly kept on talking about all of this random rubbish in south africa and the sorcery in this joint how do you fellowship with somebody that you know has a spiritual gifting with who like that also has got like just a, a, a deep and a grand exquisite abhorrence for that craft how do you experiment with somebody like that but because he was a a certified sangoma if you want to call it that he had actually gone through the whole twasarization in thing the whole initiation thing yeah he imagined that he 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 has some tricks up his sleeve see he up his sleeve he's not just some amateur practicer he's not just some person learning a spell on youtube he's not just some person consulting a sangoma but in and of themselves they have not learned the craft yeah he in and of himself is a occult practitioner yeah that's what's good so because he he, he imagined himself grandiose where I was concerned, he did a Gorobella spell on me with his little paraphernalia in whatever little tiny like hut he is sitting in and made a decision that he made this decision to do this because he imagined he had skills that excel those of many other witch doctors because not everybody in these streets, not everybody's initiated into the occult and he thought that he could veil his identity and he got busted literally, he, like his sorcery was so amateur the way he thought he was grand but he was actually really amateur in comparison to some of the cloaking spells i've seen this dude's was it, it was worthless like in the dream he was shrouded in blackness like blackness right as in i could not see his face i could not see his body or anything like that but as he was walking around his name kept on echoing let's say his name was was jabu he like uh, he would take one footstep and i would hear the word jabu 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 jabu. He would talk to me and I would hear jabu jabu jabu. Jabu ebatung. Like un situ kali bizula kahe. I could not see his face, neither his image, his body. It was shrouded in blackness. And I was busy making out with him, loving kisses like he was my boyfriend in the dream. Yet every time he took a walk, every time he took a step, his name oozed. Jabu jabu jabu. Jabu jabu jabu. <laughs> when I woke up, I was so mad. I was so angry. I was so angry. Lo and behold, that same afternoon later, he then writes me an email. On some, I'm just checking up on you. How you doing? I was like, young Telela. I didn't respond to him. I just ignored him entirely. And he got, well, very upset from what the Lord showed me and pulled one of the spell. But then, uh, whatever, like he stopped. He's ever since then, it appeared, I think, not gone back to a drawing board. But I don't care. These, these randos, like, nobody, like, I'm a child of God. It is written in God's word that there is nothing hidden that will not be revealed or exposed. There is nothing done in secret, hush hush, that is not going to be shouted on the rooftops. That's what's written in God's word. So, you can do your cloaking spells in the kingdom of darkness, but recognize that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. He is the God of everything and everything. He created all things. So therefore, no entity operating under his dominion can actually really truly hide itself from him. He is omnipresent. He is God. So whether or not 
you ask your sangoma to do a cloaking spell to make sure that nobody dreams about you that faces are closed you are naive to think that that those faces are going to remain closed even to christians you are going to get busted by believers other people the cloaking spells might work on them because that's just the kingdom of darkness that's how it operates the lord allows um the world to be under the headship or the godship of the god of this world and so therefore sorcery tends to kind of take away people in this world like a tsunami and so you will literally be laying in bed with your boyfriend and a whole lawyer like no man's business getting strange dreams that you don't understand but like you never ever see him you never ever understand that that's what he's doing but the moment you have christ the moment you get born again those scales get peeled the wax in your ears it gets melted and so you start to hear that which you ought to hear like i heard jabu 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 you start to see that which you you you, you ought to see cloaking spells mean jack they ain't nothing to christians it's just a waste of energy air time do you understand what i'm saying yeah and i've had a, a, a couple of there was like some chick from south africa another one that knew that i have i had a prophetic gifting and did a cloaking spell and with her i saw her uh, her afro she had this like strange for afro right and that's the thing that gave her away live voice a high like I, yeah dude and, and her figure like just basically like it's like her silhouette was clear even though she was shrouded in mystery in the dream she was shrouded in mystery because of the cloaking spell but i saw her afro and her physique that round african body and her voice and i was like but like what are you doing and then of course when i called her out on it she went on right ahead to call my god a small g god because i'm not really worshiping jesus i'm seeing things and what a what a that relationship eventually ended but the cloaking spells of people in the occult that try to conceal their identity fall off like with without fail in the life of a christian especially if she is or he is consecrated especially if they're prayerful and especially if they're full of fasting you cannot keep something concealed it will be revealed to the body of christ everybody else like i said is at the mercy of these occult practitioners you can literally be in a long-term relationship with someone or oh, and a puppet on a string you are a marionette and this rando ain't got la proper we are clega you are being laughed at you've got a joker for a boyfriend or a joker for a girlfriend um she's busy with you like no man's business and you can never tell you're just being tormented by nightmares but you can't tell what's going on but not with a christian so for people to imagine that they can somehow test experiment with sorcery and ultimately slide into my dms my goodness naive jabu 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 zokichu you will get exposed you will get exposed that was that right from the dude uh around these streets that's that, that random gen z weirdo yeah he did that thinking that he's like a, a whole uh, board certified sangoma and so for those reasons he's got like three up on us in the body of christ experimental and still to this day he still feels like trash like why did you experiment okay um so for anybody to think that they can somehow slide a fast one in slip it past me is naive the dude from america the lord <laughs> kept on exposing him like all day and night the problem was me the problem was me i was ignoring what i was hearing like there was a time when i was speaking with him on on facebook time like on facebook video call and he said something and the holy spirit audibly said red flag <laughs> red flag like i'm talking to this man i am seeing his face he is seeing my face on facebook video call and he said something and god said red flag i i lingered on that conversation hours we would speak for hours on end that's what's good yeah the lord was telling me Pumpelelan, get out he was warning me time and time again i would get never mind words of knowledge right i would also get visions <laughs> of him um sitting around saying i lied to her face i lied to her face and i would walk right past it right past it that was during a season of my indiscretion never mind that i was in so much pain that i needed a company and i accommodated him but that dude taught me a handsome lesson in that when the lord speaks my man like, because now i've gone it for myself unfortunately a stalker i'm relished with him proper like garnished with that guy he is out here decorating my hair he's like a bobby pin on my head the way that he's just so constantly an accessory around me he's just always stuck on something on my body and last night and night before and day before then like i said i don't want to make anybody the star of my show pedestaling them this dude is uh, keeps on going back to the drawing board concerning love spells like Corbella, this morning i woke up hearing him telling me basically speaking of me as one who is his you are mine you are mine you're gonna eventually come back trying to get me to get back together with him through that you know that song yeah white live john and claudette if only i gave you one last chance with the devil you can no longer yeah that dude that dude 
like just some wedgie from the US. Like, get what up that guy. There's, there's something that just needs to be twenty in Tiwe. It's somewhere very uncomfortable. And then you'll be able to walk straight. You, <laughs> you'll be able to walk right. That's all that he is a wedgie. And yet, nonetheless, he is a wedgie that is very tormenting. He is vestigial, non functional, nothing of him matters or is important anymore yet despite it all he is extremely um afflicting of my person he is possessive even though i don't even know what he's possessive over because we were together for like a good five seconds and he is there in america like you know the level of possessiveness that men feel to me it's i don't even understand some of them i can actually understand the possessiveness of my ex-boyfriend because i was with him for five years but like this random buffoon from america two seconds and he is feeling like oh wow <laughs> if he feels like i am his then what claim or title to me does my ex have all my exes that i was actually with that i actually had relationships with for 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 years like what is he some dude for five seconds and he's like on a mountain top like king kong bashing his chest saying that i'm his yeah i i have garnered for myself a stalker i have a stalker and it's very uncomfortable it's serious the situation is is, is dire his witchcraft is excruciating it, he just keeps going back to drain board and he taunts me he torments me do you understand what i'm saying but i don't want to keep talking about him not at length anyway i'm not trying to have to cover him um in in my ministry for any amount of time because pedestal like no i'm not doing it just m giving a person a mention that was in my life for like five seconds i'm, I'm not doing it but he is full of torment and this dude that, that i garnered for myself like he's garnish on a plate you know like parsley or whatever the way that he's just so irrelevant like fr frankly the meal would still be edible if he was not around like he the, yo this guy he's nobody he is absolutely nobody but he rocked up in my life day before yesterday and he has been so incredibly afflicting to my person that for a season i thoroughly did not even imagine that i could ever get out of it but now i am i'm i'm cool like i survive him better than i used to if you know what i mean why under heaven he's even still looking at me i don't understand coupled with the fact that we are cool at he's got hiv there's just so much that young boy the situation is annoying but this dude in america he's not the only one that has these delusions of grandeur this level of irrationality this insensitivity never mind it too but just a comprehensive mental illness like it's, a, it's just a mental illness there are complete strangers that have been casting death spells on me because of my no-nonsense disposition entitlement why are they feeling entitled it is because of my life circumstance there are women who are trying to manipulate the outcomes of my life that don't know me from a bar of soap complete strangers that is the level of lunacy that we are living in so do you not see that this is sodom do you not see that these are the last days do you not see that we are living in that time where people find a stranger rocking up like proper they hear of a stranger coming to sleep overnight in their town and then they gather outside of that motel that hotel that holiday inn they gather outside of bad residences where they are being hospitably taken care of and then start to demand that you bring them out we want to have sex with them because you recognize that they're from out of town that's exactly what's going on here it is just like the days of sodom it is just like sodom a level of perversity where it is that people feel entitled to a person up until they bash down doors insisting to lay with a person this morning i wake up to hear that uh, like i said a whole chunk of men on some she has to die quickly we have to kill her lest she should get her life back together and humiliate us and make out of us something rotten and some of these people like i said i don't know them i don't know them they don't know me so frankly even if i were to get a million subscribers on youtube and therefore successfully create awareness about what's going on in the kinema darkness these people could still successfully keep a cloak a veil of secrecy over their faces they can still claim it wasn't me they can still gaslight the world around them they can still deny like shaggy that it wasn't them they can they can totally still keep on denying because they don't know me i have not called them out of my ministry i have not described them i have not essentially spoken of them telling tales of my feats and my exploits of history with them they can still get away with it if at all they don't have another garabo in their lives and yet they thoroughly feel as if though i gotta die real quickly before they get exposed what are you talking about like you don't know me i don't know you you can totally continue to conceal your rubbish in the climate of your girlfriend your mom your dad your pig your dogs your colleagues and your next door neighbor they don't gotta know that in the community they're proper they don't have to know 
and yet these people feel so near and dear and so close to my particular cause and case that they feel as if though my so not survival the word that i'm looking for is if i were to explode on social media that they would get kippered maybe they're scared that people would get born again and start dreaming about them i don't know but frankly the behavior is, is <laughs> it evidences that we were not against flesh and blood it's entities that don't want this coming out to a point where people feel personally attacked by my ministry even though they don't know me from a bar of soap not only do they feel personally attacked but they feel personally uh potentially exposed by everything i speak even though they don't i don't know them and they don't know me i don't know them they just have they just listen to my content and manifest some serious evil they manifest demons like no man's business are just spazzing on the floor saying what do you want with us son of man very well with that being the general climate of neosensical men menaces with that being the issue that i am i keep on highlighting perpetually time and time again the lord keeps on verifying that we are going home and so in this video i am attempting and i am going to try and keep it in one part hopefully i will succeed to do that okay i want you to understand that my life and the bizarre mistreatment of my person the bizarre behavior around me is literally hands to love if not but in lesser measure going to be the lives of christians you're going to be strangely treated in the tribulation it is written in god's word in the book of first peter i believe four that do not consider it strange when you go through trials of different kinds this is for the testing of your faith however that strangeness that is that happens to us ubiquitously across the board across all ages of christians is going to get especially exquisite in the worst time in the history of the human race it is written in the book of daniel it is also written in Matthew, it's written in Daniel 12, it's written in Matthew 24, and it's also written in Luke 21, that that time ain't no other time in history compared to it. So whatever it is that Christians have gone through all throughout history, yeah, no, pin drop in the ocean, including all the martyrs of history, the Christian persecution in Rome, where it is that they were being mauled by lions in the Colosseum under Nero, apparently, allegedly, that pales in comparison to what's coming that was really bad but what's coming is going to be worse there is no other time in history that compares to the tribulation and it's written littered across the scriptures that that's going to be a thing so my bizarre life is only a foreshadowing of what's going to happen however in grander measure hence why there's going to be some female that presently can't stand me that's going to be my personal interpreter of my languages now that i'm not going to be here Hence, people who can't stand me, who are standing back, plotting and scheming against me, are going to interpret my captions. They're going to interpret my, 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 my videos, my speak, and add captions to my videos. Y'all need to get that. It's going to be a whole thing. <laughs> because there is no other time in history that compares to what is coming. And so what little prototype that you might have, what little tiny example, a hypothetical circumstance that was being lived out by a Christian in broad daylight before you, you are going to run with it because you're going to know that you're going to need all the encouragement you can get. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, hey, y'all, there's this dude that I watch the videos of every so often, but I haven't subscribed to him because he's not godly, coupled with the fact that some of the stuff that he says, young Bora, and he every so often just drops profanity. But like every so often, there are gems in what he speaks. And this dude, the other day, the first video that I watched of him, he just looked like a regular South African guy, you know? And he was nice to listen to. Yeah. I just recently watched a video of his like yesterday. And the dude has got like black nail polish all right he is a he a, he is a self-professed fully heterosexual male and i know that because he's got like a whole baby mama and i think fiance and it's a woman yeah the same dude whose video that i watched three weeks ago with him looking like just some dude with little scruffy hair you know looking like a guy looking like a dude in that's what's good basically somebody that even i if i were to like you know pass him by uh, in the streets here i'd be like cute guy you know and if you were to talk to me i might even blush that's what's good thinking that yeah this is somebody that i can maybe potentially consider if at all i was in the world a guy like that why cars are the way that he speaks very rational sober smart dude yeah three weeks ago i'm out here listening to him on some okay I, I, could, I could i could dig i could dig i like this channel even though i don't like listening to south african content i, I lingered on that guy for all of his video mm. so now he keeps on getting recommended to me and recently he did a video lamenting about some racist um uh da member 
Denzel Arms said, like, a Democratic Alliance member dude that is racist. And I clicked on it just to hear what he has to say, right? Because I realized that since the last video that he did, I was happy. I was content to listen to him. So maybe I might be content to listen to him here now, too. Because I tend to get grieved by South African content. So since he didn't grieve me the first time around, I was like, let me hear what this uh, Oki gotta say. This Bru gotta say. Yeah. And I get in his video, I clicked away after like a good minute, right? It was not long. It was, could have been like maybe a 20 minute long video that he did. I didn't listen to the rest of it because he's he's outward appearance. And I was shocked out of my mind at the landslide changes that he made to his appearance in just three weeks. In just three weeks. First and foremost, dude got Jalja like a piercing in his nose. He pierced his nose. I have a thing about men and facial jewelry, any kind of, anyway, whatever. He pierced his nose. Okay, some people might be like, well, guys get to pierce their noses too. No, they don't. Like, absolutely not. Like, uh, a, a gold ring in the nose of a woman is a gift awarded to women in the Bible and women only. Like, men are not supposed to adorn themselves that way. It's it's effeminate. Do you know what I'm saying? That was the first thing. And then his, he had like some black fingernails. Like he had painted his fingernails. And I was like, why? What is going on? And all I could reach the conclusion of was that, was that our men are not the same. There is a spirit, an effeminate spirit that is just coursing through their veins. They're doing things that we do for a man to sit. Like first and foremost, for a man to go to, to Edgar's, to Foshini, to Jet, and purchase nail polish. And no, he hasn't been haromwa, ki girlfriend. His girlfriend or his wife or his mom did not send him. And say, please buy me nail polish at the store. He went there in his own capacity and purchased nail polish. Brought it home. Do you understand? And then opened it. And you know that whole thing with nail polish that you have to do. And then just carefully painting. My goodness. What in the world? For a man to go to lengths to do that. Where is the man? Where is the man? There is a covetousness of femininity by men. In a very uncomfortable capacity and it's happening at a rapid speed and this is the kind of stuff that infiltrates and grooves into the bones of heterosexual men that all of a sudden are out here curious about their sexuality because the this, these modern days that we are in right now are frankly cray cray i was like why does this dude have black nail polish why under heaven does this dude have a nose piercing in literally just three weeks he went and got his nose pierced and he painted his nails black i was wondering what the rest of him probably looks like i don't know what are your toenails also black uh, uh are you shaving your legs more than normal are you doing things are you focusing on things that you tended to not focus on before and why are you not asking yourself what's with that why are you doing that what has come into you but what is it that has done this to you in this short space of time i'm trying to help you understand that things are ramping up so exquisitely so astronomically and at such a crazy rate right now in light of demonization demon possession and the um embracing of just landslide uh, diametrically opposed historically ideals to yours by people it's happening so quickly that this can only lead to the end of all things the increase the the the, the, the increased rate and the, the, how, you know, the rate of insanity is increasing at an increasing rate. It's growing exponentially. And it's happening overnight. Like I said, this dude, the first video I watched of his was literally just three weeks ago. It was within the this very month of, of um June. It was within this very month of June that I watched his first video. And just three weeks later, he's out here skating on the ice of being Prince. We all know how Prince, or he called himself, what, the artist? Like, we are all still, to this day, confused as to whether or not that dude was truly straight or what's going on with him. But whether or not he was heterosexual is irrelevant. Why? Because even the Bible makes it clear that it is a sin for a man to be effeminate. To be effeminate. And our men, who are whole alpha males, are starting to be girly. And women are also starting to embrace a little bit of a butch disposition. And these, like, you know, uh, blurrings of lines are happening at an increasing rate precisely because of the time that we find ourselves in there is a spirit there are spirits in operation over our countries that are expediting the worst time in the history of the human race luke 21 matthew 24 daniel 12 worst time ever it's coming do you know what i'm saying uh, do not look at look and think why do you think like this why are you not going back into your your orifices your faculties like digging deep into your subconscious if you will and asking yourself why am i so significantly different significantly different from one month ago why am i so significantly different from three weeks ago 
yo, I'm not speaking significantly different now from a year ago because I mean that used to be a thing. Like last year or day or year before last, we were shocked at how quickly or how uh, vastly things have transformed on the earth in just a year. Now we are shocked at how vastly things are transforming in just weeks. And now more so, are we shocked at how things are vastly consuming in just days, hours? Dude, out here in a three week pre period, be walking in effeminateness that was not in his videos three weeks ago. It's happening at as a lightning speed. This is unsustainable. An object in motion will stay in motion unless acted on by another force. Newton's law of motion. So therefore, unless the Lord removes the restrainer and snaps you out of your journey to effeminateness, journey to your feminine side as a man and vice versa as a woman, unless the Lord removes the restrainer and shows you Uti, I, whoa, like you don't get to live like barbarians on my earth. Y'all would like no flesh would be saved. Nobody would, would in continue to get born again. The years would progress and Christianity would literally fade. It would taper. It would reach as in total proportions in the sense that those who are converting to Christ would perpetually on the daily continue to decline. However, never truly getting to zero because there will always be someone that will embrace God. Do you know what I'm saying? But like the rate of conversion would significantly pl plunge until it reaches asymptotal levels. It'll become an asymptote on the x, x axis. When then Christianity declines at that ridiculous rate to a point of negligible conversions to Christ, do you think that God is going to keep this a going concern? No, like I said, I keep repeating myself. The Lord has set apart, sorry, uh, he's doing no other thing but gathering for himself a people for his own possession. So if he's not doing that anymore, or, or, or with any level of prosperity, if there are no longer people converting to him and the earth is just becoming increasingly pagan and men are becoming more women and women are becoming more manly, um, I'm sorry, no, this is going to end. And the only thing that can actually, it's all, it's, it's actually, it's actually quite redemptive. For God to remove the restrainer, for God to ultimately put a dead break on this insanity is redemptive. It might be shocking. It might be fearsome. It might be scary. It might be daunting to look at. It might be the, the bane essentially of the general global population's existence, but it is redemptive to those who would ultimately gain ears to hear. For he who has an ear, let him hear what the spirit has to say to the churches. It's redemptive because if God puts a, a, a screeching halt, to the dude who in three weeks Aja is wearing black nail polish and has a nose ring. That's what's good. Yeah, if, if the Lord puts a screeching, if he does something that's going to put a screeching halt to that activity, that dude might actually be saved. He might be redeemed. He might realize that he gets on. What am I doing? That's literally make and take introspection, look within, gaze in a mirror, longingly and lovingly, and recognize you're like one who has looked in the mirror and said Candyman five times. Something horrific is happening and you need to cast it out by the Holy Spirit of the living God. You need to literally cast it out by the name of Jesus because if you do not do that, you're going to just be taken away by a tsunami. This insanity going on in these streets, yo, it's not going to linger. My life, it's sad, it sucks. And you know what? I would die. If at all, the Lord did not suddenly do something about the situation. I would not have been left in this state. I will say this time and time again, if the Lord did not intend to rapture the body of Christ. I had to be a monument, an example, do you understand? So that all of these pilfering fools would realize just what they're doing. Like seize hostilities against my person. This here is a international purge. Never mind a national purge. People are purging. Crime is legal. Two thousand two, uh, uh, well, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. So not even just one night a year. Mm, that's what's good. Crime is now legal all across the board. That which is good is now called evil. That which is evil is now called good. That which is bitter is sweet. Everything has been exchanged. Salt is sour. You do understand? Sweet is sour and what what etc. And all of that random rubbish that is going on right now, it is redemptive for the Lord to rapture the body of Christ, therefore removing the restrainer from the earth to show you that you... <laughs> First of all, Christ is Lord. Let's just put that out there. You, Christ is Lord. You don't get... And secondly, you don't get to just carry on like this. This cantankerous circus down below that you want to call an earth is unsustainable in the state. It is cataclysmic what you're doing. It would reach entropy if left unchecked. And seeing as the Lord has a different plan than entropy for the earth, a thousand year millennial reign and then only, like the end of all things by fire, will the earth be burned. Uh, he's not going to then allow a whole bunch of self-destructive human beings in their feverish endeavors to literally end life as we know it. He's not going to let them continue in their conquest. It's futile. Why do the nations plot in vain? Thus saith the Lord. Through the Proverbs, 
Is it Psalms or Proverbs? I believe it might be the Psalms. Why do the nations plot in vain? Is it Psalm or somewhere? Either the Psalms or the Proverbs, one or two. Yeah, plotting and scheming in comprehensive vanity. Unless a person builds the, a house in the Lord, they build it in vain. And here in lies your house, the earth, that you are building vainly. Do you understand? With all of your feverish insanity. It cannot continue. It is not allowed to proceed. Do you understand? The Lord will not allow any such thing to continue in this dastardly general direction. This trajectory is not sustainable. It is rather like Dorothy's house in the Wizard of Oz. Out you're floating in the sky, hurling projectiles at innocent babies. It's gonna kill the world, your witchcraft. It's going to kill the world. Your a disregard of your genders, your, your disregard of that which is historically normal and okay and sober. Like dreams and dreams. Keep having them, yo. But recognize when you wake up that it was a dream. And when you don't wake up and realize it was a dream, I do apologize. Like I said, entropy much. It's literally giving end of the world. It's giving RIP cadaver, uh, deathbed. You know, it's giving out your last kick of a dying horse. It's giving mortuary, like cold sore because it's virulent. It's just not sustainable. It is not sustainable. But like, <laughs> you're doing it anyway. You're doing it. You're doing it. And, and, and what's good is that you're not going to continue to do it with any level of ease, without the Lord literally massacring you into extinction or something. This is not sustainable. All of these death spells that keep on being hurled in my direction because people feel like they can, you know, run really fast like the zombies in World War Z and bash some walls when they are unable to permeate them. Mm, mm -mm. No, it's not going to continue. Bring her out that we might have sex with her or she must die. Why are you looking like Sodom? What's with you, Archer, rolling these streets looking like a Sodomite? Why under heaven? Are you trying to make like the Benjamites, causing me to be chopped up into 12 pieces and scattered across South Africa? All of our nine provinces, make that nine pieces, seeing as South Africa's got nine provinces. Eh, eh, mm, mm. Bashing some doors, bashing some doors, cracking a satanic uh, uh, whip because you think you're that oracle. Eh, eh, eh. Dreams and dreams. Y'all can dream. If, eh, eh, if you consider it a devastating affair to one day experience me getting married, you know what? It's okay, you and your strange uh, observations of that which devastates. I don't know why that's even devastating. It's actually quite glorious. Uh, people ought to rejoice. It's written in God's word that when a wicked man runs the show, the people on the ground mourn, right? They reel, they cry. But when a righteous man runs the show, they rejoice. At least that used to be the case. But like in the last days, you are just being so besotted with wickedness that when wickedness rules and reigns, you're celebrating, you're ululating like you're that ancient civilization in the movie Apocalypto. Out you're rolling some beheaded heads down a steep staircase and then ululating ooh, 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 at the moon. Because that's what you worship. Mm. When that's your land, when the wicked thrive and you're happy and you're, like I said, bashing your chest on a mountaintop, ululating, howling at the moon because you think you're a werewolf. When that's what you're doing, when wicked men rule, Instead of the opposite, you're done for. There is no sustainability of any such ecosystem. It cannot be contained. It's not. It's 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 a bombed existence. It's nuked. It's done for. You're just yet to wake up in eternity. And so because you're in a transitory phase in some spirit realm, you have not yet been alerted to the fact that you are dead. And it's just not going to work out very well for you in that state. This is not sustainable, Sodom. It is not. My life. It's sad, it's uncomfortable, it is poignant in how uncomfortable it is, it's excruciating, we get it, but like, anybody that wants to underestimate my witness and my testimony, you are doing that at your own peril and also, um, admittedly so, you are not ignorant to the folly that you are walking in. You are insincere about God, it's clear. You are making excuses for why you are unsupportive of me. And on top of that, this, these questions that keep on being raised in the sky like they're important or whatever. Along the lines of, but why is she suffering so much? What is it that we don't know that she's not showing us? No, honey, I'm living my life before you as a living epistle that I might be an example to the, um, the true ambassadorship of the kingdom of heaven. And if at all you feel as if there's something about me that must obviously be awry, and that's the reason why God is not answering my prayer, you need to on that day wake up to recognize how unbiblical you are. I am only enduring that which is true biblical persecution. I'm going through true biblical suffering. These things would happen. And for you to imagine that the only reason why God appears to not be coming through for me is because I must be doing something wrong is to literally be like Job's friends. 
at this particular moment. The Bible made it clear that you must count the cost of being a disciple. In this world, you will have much trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. The scriptures make it clear that the world hates disciples, that you're going to suffer much persecution. That the day is going to come when those who afflict you will do so thinking they're doing a service to God. That you will be thrown out of the synagogues. That you will be reviled before men. That you are going to lose homes, fields, mothers, brothers, uh, cows and dogs. You are going to lose it all. Do you understand? For the sake of the kingdom of heaven, some of you might even be martyred, it is written in God's word. But like precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints, to live as Christ but to die is gain persecution. Comes part and parcel of the Christian experience, but modern day church, really in inverted commas, whatever's going on out here in these streets, the modern day conglomerate of wannabe believers are described in 2 Timothy 3. As always learning but never coming to a knowledge of truth, uh, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. They're described in 2 Thessalonians 2 as reprobate, entirely handed over to a, uh, to a strong delusion because they have not loved the truth but have taken pleasure in their unrighteousness. It is written of them in uh, the book of Romans 1. That not only do they know that what they're doing is dastardly and beastly, not only do they know that what they're doing is wrong and deserves punishment, but they also celebrate those who continue in such a fashion as this. It is written in Daniel 12 that the wicked in the last days are going to continue to just do nasty stuff while the righteous will continue to do righteous things. The wicked will do wickedly still while the righteous will continue to learn and they will understand, okay? Yeah, the Bible made it clear that in these days, there's going to be a great apostasy. People are going to fall away. The man of lawlessness will not be revealed. Is it First Thessalonians, I believe, 2? Stand corrected. Is going to be revealed, but not before the great falling away first. It's also written in Matthew 24 that there's going to be a departing from the faith. People will not be able to endure sound doctrine and having itching ears, according to one of the Timothys, first or second Timothy, having itching ears, they're going to gather for themselves a great number of teachers. I think it's for, it's second Timothy 4. They're going to gather for themselves a great number of teachers to teach them what their itching ears want to hear. The scriptures have made it clear that when you come to Christ, you're going to go through it, okay? And you must build your house upon the rock such that when then waves and winds beat down on you, I don't eat persecution and life just kind of really sucks, you're going to stand firm in Christ. You're going to bear fruit 30-fold over, 60-fold over, and 100-fold over. That's what the Bible has got to say. Life as a Christian is like that of Annie. It's a hard knock life for us. It's a hard knock life for us. Instead of treated, we get tricked. Instead of kisses, we get kicked. It's a hard knock life. The scriptures made it clear that that would be a thing. So when you look at me, as one who why is she suffering like this something must be wrong honey you have not been reading the bible it's a christian life to go through it and when you go through it especially exquisitely according to god's word you're super blessed on that day because blessed are the persecuted yeah my life is biblical but in the last days like i said people will not endorse our doctrine they will gather for themselves a great number of teachers to teach them what the ancient years want to hear they will rather take heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons because that's just what's going on you're classist you're classist you are walking in an Ananias and Sapphira general disposition. Your green is nasty. It's seedy. Like I said, it's giving RIP cadaver cold bed mortuary. It's giving autopsy. It's dead. And so for those reasons, you in the dead days that you are walking in are looking at somebody who is alive and thriving and blessed because she's precisely because she is persecuted and you are second guessing her. Your second guessing is the behavior or activity of Cain. You are jealous, you are covetous of your brother Abel. And so sin is crouching at your door and its desires to have you. And God has told you to master it, but you're not mastering it, are you? Now, you're not mastering it. You are just plotting and scheming a way to end the life of a completely innocent woman. According to God's word in Matthew 25, one day he's going to ask you, oh rando, when I was hungry, you didn't feed me. Or did you? When I was naked, you didn't clothe me. Or did you? When I was in prison and sick, you did not visit me. Or did you? When I was etc. You get my point? And you will be like, but God, when I didn't do this, when, when did I not do this for you? And the Lord will tell you that which you did not do for the least of my disciples, you did not do it for me. Remember how it is that you looked at Garabo living an any hard knock life because I told her she would live a hard knock life, but she must hold fast to me and neither persecutions, nor demons, angels, nothing at all will ever separate my love from her. She trusted that and held fast to me. And despite making an observation, of her sorrow, her excruciated, persecuted life. Mm. You did not support her, you did not stand with her, you did not help her along, you did not pray with her, you did not do any such thing. If anything, you mocked her, made like Job's friends, teased a person who is going through a lot while she is highly regarded by me. She is nearly and dearly regarded by me. The Lord did make it clear in his word that the least on the earth are going to be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven and vice versa. And that he will take the weakest things among us all to shame the strong. So my sorrow, my persecution, my want, my lack, my dead life. See, yes, you imagine me a cadaver is like that of Lazarus. It will ultimately come forth. According to God's word, I am blessed when I'm in that state. I am the greatest in the kingdom 
of heaven. So do not look at my persecution and imagine me one who there must be obvious something out here in these streets illing odd something I can't beg you, lad, nah, eh, eh, shut up you are not reading the bible it is a pamphlet you are making excuses sin is crouching at your door it desires to have you you're in ab abundance and with the abundance that you are walking in you imagine yourself blessed and highly favored therefore it's giving health wealth and prosperity it's eerie that way it's giving Jesse to Plantis. It's giving Kenneth Copeland and Krifla Dollar. It's giving a word of faith. It's, it's giving doctrines of demons and destructive heresies. It's giving anathema. It's giving anathema. To comprehensively disregard a Christian because they're suffering is anathema. And it's anathema only because God made it clear that the world hates disciples. I'm going to engraft you into the uh, branch, into the vine, sorry, as branches. And you're going to be pruned. So pruning is cutting. It's going to hurt. But you're going to bear more fruit in so being pruned. And anybody that looks at you like you ain't Jack, yeah, no. Demas left us because he was never of us. It is no wonder you then end up interpreting my language, captioning it in the tribulation now that you've been all left behind and everything. Mm, that's what I'm getting at. So, no, guys. No. Sodom vibes? It can only lead to the end of the world. Is that basic? Gomorrah vibes? End of the world. Yeah, pego perilena. Black nail polish on a man. Eh, eh. Sodom and Gomorrah. Like, that's what's going on. The uh, nose ring. What's next? He's going to be wearing a tiara. I apologize. Uh, a tutu. Mm -mm. Yeah, yeah. Well, what's next? Uh, relax. Uh, relax. Like, as in mum ring. Mm -mm. No. Boyfriends out here one day wearing your diguayguayis, wearing your underwear. Did you string alone? Eh, eh, eh. Mm -mm. Whatever's going on in this world, it's unsustainable. Like I said, the conversion of believers to Christ is as total as at present. It's, it's flatlining. And so therefore it can only result in no other thing but boom 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 trumpet blast dead in christ rise first we who are alive and remain will be caught up in the air to meet the lord is that basic is that basic i'm about to leave and when i do leave please please do me right by properly interpreting what i am saying don't rob the brazilians of the true words that i'm speaking because that's what you're going to be doing out here in these streets now now you're going to be interpreting the words of the very woman you comprehensively disregarded because she was suffering too much yeah because you were unbiblical unbiblical my life looks like that of tribulation saints but like in mild measure because it's going to be super bad then Right now I got grace. Right now the restraint has not been removed. Right now I can watch videos on YouTube. I've got internet access. Right now I can speak my mind and not be uh, silenced, removed, uh, found uh, as a bleep on the radar only to be located and then beheaded. Right now there is mercy, but there will be none then. So my life is a pin drop in the ocean to the life of tribulation saints. Your life is are going to suck now that the rapture has happened. People are going to ignore you even though you are totally listenable to. People are going to think you are bizarre even though you are the only one sober. People are going to insist on withholding from you basic necessities because you refuse to unleash to Satan. People are going to refuse that you should buy or sell, drink or eat precisely because you refuse to unleash to Satan. Is that not what the occult is working feverishly day and night like little doggy dogs off off? to achieve they are withholding from me an ability to monetize my youtube channel keep on bewitching me to force me to be with some rando that i don't want to be with sin against god marriage and remarriage go and grab some married man and make like alicia keys and make him my husband because he thinks he's swiss beats that's what's good yeah or carabo you're going to find yourself all like you know unchilded and unmarried and unwhat knotted let your life suck carabo we don't care yeah that's what's good about your skills and your talents we do not care that you are gifted all that which you have got jam-packed it won't matter because the day is going to arrive in the future the near one at that where your skills and talents and how much work you put in do not matter according to god's word we must work by the sweat of our brow in order to eat some food do you understand what i'm saying when you therefore work you ought to eat it is written in god's word in the acts of the apostles that if anybody does not want to work let them not eat but of course the opposite must be true that if at all people out here working they better be bountifully at a buffet eating so the tribulation is this like strange weird time where people are not being rewarded based on their hard work they're being rewarded based on their allegiance to satan 
So you could be a total bum, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty ought overwhelm you like an armed man, and scarcity like a bandit, and yet you are just rolling in that dough. You are out here sitting in that apartment, comfortable, cushy. You are out here scrolling through channels on some strange, like, program, right? Some strange streaming platform. You are out here with all the internet access of the planet. You have got resources for days. You've got a gym inside your apartment. Like, you are catered to. Even though you're a bum. You're a bum. You're just sitting. You're merely existing. Like a door turning on its hinges, so too does a lazy man turn on his bed. And according to God, if you're lazy, you ought not eat. But there's going to be the worst travesty of a time in the history of the human race. The worst upside down situation that can ever exist in the history of the human race. Where some pretty incredible buttocks are going to be merely existing and yet coining it. They're going to have refrigerators full of food. While those who are working like unja dogs. Do you understand what I'm saying? Hmm are going to struggle to eat. They're going to struggle to make ends meet. They're going to be emaciated. They're going to be putting in all the time with none of the reward. It's the great tribulation. Unless you take the mark of the beast, you won't be able to participate in commerce. Slave and free, great and small, everybody on the earth, if at all they're going to eat, they are going to have to worship Satan. So it's not based on working by the sweat of your brow. It's based on giving your soul to Satan. And that's exactly what's being done to me, don't you see? People are saying, I'm your twasa for eing. I can I have a tongue. My prophetic gifting belongs to Jesus. I'm bizangwa mina to be a sangoma. I'm called mina to be umzalwani. That's what's good. Therein lies something else for you to interpret, Gola. That's what's good. Mm. Udwella. I have got a gift for God. And that's what it is that I'm working to achieve. I'm working feverishly for the kingdom of heaven, for the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. For Stangela, mm. That's what's good. Mm. Yet, despite me working by the sweat of my brow and like Adam and Eve, I'm supposed to therefore be bountifully a sampa face every single day. I should be able to purchase whatever I want to buy. Mm. I should have a, a, a basket full of like toiletries from Diskim every week, never mind every month. And yet, I'm struggling to put sense together for even that. That's what's good. Even though, y'all have seen my shorts, the amount of work I put in, y'all have seen my long form content, y'all have listened to my, goodness gracious me, first is the recording of this video and then ascertaining that, there, that, that it is delivered with quality standards, that you might be able to be cool tomorrow, do you understand, upon listening to my work and yet look at me facing death. People are trying to kill me. Men are trying to force me to be with them gangane or else. Like Papa, they are just giving me ultimatums as if though them swinging like Sia on a chandelier is going to scare me. Be afraid, be very afraid. No, I'm sorry. I fear only Christ. Not man who can only kill the body and thereafter do nothing. I fear God who can, after killing the body, throw the soul too into the flames of hell. I cannot have a little, no, I don't care. Therein lies something else to interpret, girl. Mamela. This whole situation is not a going concern. It is not sustainable. Do you understand? However, you have made me live like a tribulation saint. I am not able to buy or sell. Why? Because I refuse to hang out with all of y'all. And I also refuse to let some dude ugh, and just spoil me rotten, buy me some apartment. Help me not suffer so much. Pull in a favor for me with some of his occult friends that they might let me go. That I might not suffer so much. That my YouTube channel might not be so crazy frozen. That yeah, all that jazz. Help me monetize. Uh, I'm sorry. I work like a dog. I work like an injured dog, bark, bark, off, off, like proper. I work like a dog. And yet I'm not eating. Do you think I am continuing to work like this? With all of this coercion all up in my grill? Out here piercing my nose like that guy's nose. Mm. Do you seriously think, Wuti, all of this offensive, insulting attrition that you are subjugating me to is going to make me capitulate? No, I'm sorry. I see this for exactly what it is. The Lord has made me a monument, an example, some kind of a prototype that you might survive the tribulation by any means necessary. Do what you need to do. I work like a dog. I produce so much content and I go out of my way to meticulously ascertain that it is consumable, that it's not yawn worthy, boring, you know, or whatever. I'm trying to help you understand. I, I, I sleep almost when the sun is up, just like the Proverbs 31 lady. My son, my lamp does not go out at night. Because are like this for nothing. It appears for Mahala, but my reward is great in heaven. Hallelujah. Mm, that's what's good. I am like this because that's how you're going to be in the tribulation. No amount of effort to essentially display that you're very talented and so deserve to be heard. You're very skilled and so therefore deserve to be regarded. Ain't nobody going to care. Why? Because you don't have the mark of the beast. You don't have the mark of the beast. 
I refuse to take the mug of the beast. I refuse to settle. I refuse to let some rando be my baby daddy. I refuse to marry some dude that's gonna go and divorce his wife for me. Or some divorce and so therefore making me a second wife. Making me therefore an adulteress. Marriage and remarriage. Problematic according to the scriptures. I refuse to settle for some unbeliever. I refuse to let some occult like practitioner out here dote over me. Like wine and dine me. Care for my needs. I like proper. I am standing fast to my convictions on Christ. I'm 39 years old with a geriatric womb, having never been married, having never had children, and I am being told biological rash, no, by a biological clock. Relax. Blomanke. Bopi pondo. No ba vele vele nangondo. That's what's going on. Relax, son, guys. Blom. I am rela I'm refusing to do all those things, not because I'm pompous, arrogant, and I'm special, but because God said don't do it. It's literally that basic. This is all about God. It's not about me. It's not about my pride, my arrogance, and my uh, iffy little prudish disposition. It's about Jesus. This is about what our king would have to do. We would have to say about how to conduct our behavior ourselves. Mm. Before him, he is holy. Revere him for crying out loud. Like I said, relax. Mm. Therein lies something else for you to interpret, girl. We're not doing this, guys. We're not doing this, not even in the slightest, you understand what I'm saying? I am living the life of a tribulation saint. I am being refused access to basic things under the constitution of South Africa. I've got a right to, never mind life, so what's with the death curses? But to make a living, I, sh I ought to be able, if I wanna, to basically start a business sign, you know? So it's an infringement on my constitutional rights to keep on cursing my prospects. That's what's good. That's what get a bolo. bolo regulate. But therein lies something else that you must interpret, girl. Mm. Witchcraft needs to be regulated. Sorcery needs to be regulated. But you know, people ain't gonna do that because we're living in some upside down, random, weird uh, situation, Nyan, where everything is bitter, sweet, sweet, bitter, ugly, pretty, pretty, ugly, uh, nasty, good, good, nasty. Like, yeah, don't nobody know the difference anymore. So for those reasons, we are gonna get taken out of this 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 monstrosity. The travesties that you're seeing and some of y'all the lord has given me understanding that um the way that i explain things no one helps you grasp matters the way that i do and you have been scouring the streets of youtube trying to find the meat that you get here with all of my intensity and you're not getting it and yet the lack of support where is it getting -la -la, that's you and also the amount of attitude the constant going back to a drawing board to force me to do strange things i also got a dream the other day of people trying to minimize my intensity i'm coming in the name of jesus christ it is written honako luke 16 is it 16 or 21 stand corrected i do believe it's 16 or maybe 21 like i said stand corrected but it's certainly in the book of luke uh no book of john john 16 john 16 luke 20 anyway the words of those who speak, nobody is going to be able to resist them. When you throw us out the synagogues, when you persecute us and throw us before men and all that jazz, before governors and kings, we will speak haughty things that no one will be able to resist because those things will be given us by God to speak. It will be God himself that is saying, Karabo, go and prophesy, Sister Gail, prophesy. That's what's good. And then you will prophesy. So you are unable to resist the words being spoken by said disciple as that and not a single hair on their head will perish that's exactly what's also actually in these streets occurring mm. and yet you're in denial you are like i said scouring the streets of youtube to try and find similar content from someone that does not grieve you or grate you so much and you're not finding it so i mean if at all you're so edified by my content to a point even of being triggered to a point like i said even of witchcraft like what's langmo what is going on over there that just evidences the ridiculousness of the last days that we are living in. People are not going to be able to endure sound doctrine. And so having itching ears, they will gather for themselves a great number of teachers to teach them what they want to hear. Mm. That's what's happening. My life is tribulation me. It's tribulation me. And when I survive it and ultimately get raptured, it'll be an inspiration to the left behind church that will have in the run up to given me tons of attitude. Lots. Lots and lots of attitude. Passing a sister shade. Actually giving me lots of grief giving R.I.P. cadaver, sand, soil, and autopsy, like I said, it's giving dead, flat line. I'm like Dr. Doolittle, speaking to some animali, that's what's up. Mm. I'm chatting to a whole chunk of animals right now, but you will become people one of these days because you're going to recognize just how under heaven your indiscretion made you animal, and now you are an unraptured animal, only human beings born again in the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
are going to be raptured right now you're acting like animal so for what for who are you entering heaven you are insincere you're duplicitous you are literally straddling some fences lukewarm laodicea in church you think you've arrived but according to god's word you are pitiable blind poor and frankly detestable but if you eat of the fruit and if you uh consume of that which the lord god almighty will have you consume if you dine at his table he will embrace you he will accept you he will clothe you he will give you new robes he will make out of you something brand spanking new right now it's all rotten it's old it's giving tired it's giving exhausted it's given worn out there's another word to interpret girl that's what's good cease and desist all of these hostilities against my person we're not doing it we are not however it appears you're continuing to attempt so you will perish if you don't repent mm. i've been saying it for a minute my life is tribulation -y. it's tribulation -y. it's entirely tribulation -y. and so because it's as tribulation -y as it is i get it's happy i get it's happy there's another thing to interpret girl i'm not scared of y'all i am not afraid very afraid i see it for what it is i'm not looking at candy man in the mirror at your manifesting seeing as i've said his name five times this is not a horror movie for me this is a feat this is an excellent endeavor this is a wonderful idea by god this here is my good works in advance that I might walk in them. And frankly, I'll take them any day above your indiscretion. Get grand, get grand. I will talk about bigger grand. I'm also not there in life, something else to interpret, girl. But like, listen, all of these death spells, you will keep doing them until I'm gone. That's me. You will bewitch me until the rapture. Do not say, I did not warn you. So I hope you've been edified. I'm signing out in the name of Jesus Christ, Cran K. Peace.